why we needed OSCE, why it was uh, uh, thought to be the better option. Now, there are four factors uh, which can affect a student's or a candidate's performance. If we are talking about a long case or a short case, real life clinical examination. One is patient's performance. Second, examiner bias. Third, non-standardized marking scheme. And the fourth is the candidate's actual performance. So unfortunately, uh, the candy, uh, of course, one, the most important element here is candidate's actual performance, but that performance is being affected by a number of other factors, which are out of control of the candidate and are not relevant, like the patient behavior, the patients may have uh, uh, different behavior with different students under different conditions, examiner bias, and the non-structured or non-standardized marking scheme, so there could be inter-examination uh, or intra-examiner's uh, uh, in, uh, uh, differences in opinion. So OSCE was brought in to reduce the number of variables, means using standardized patients would reduce the patient's uh, influence. Same examiner, so examiner bias would be reduced and standardized marking schemes means there would be little difference between marking among different students. So this is what we expect from an OSCE. A well-designed well OSCE, the grades of the candidates should predominantly be affected by the performance of candidate alone and with minimal uh, effect or con uh, confounding effect from other factors. That is the uh, point, a real strong reason uh, for uh, OSCE to be accepted so widely across the globe. If we look at the long case, uh, uh, the traditional long case examination and what were the, tissue, the issues involved in that, one is we know that the the candidate's interaction with the patient, including history taking and general communication is not always observed. The student is communicating and examining the patient in the absence of the examiner and examiner comes only later. Second, the marks awarded for lung case are based upon unstructured questioning rather than checklist or standardized scoring sheets. So actually we can improve our long case examination uh, by using observed long case examination, which some of medical schools in Malaysia are doing, especially the end of posting, and second standardized marking schemes and rubrics. The point here is that it's not necessary to really discard long case uh, uh, from the examination as long as we can improve on, on some degree of. Uh, uh, observed long case and can if we can use some standardized uh, marking schemes which uh, are available uh, from number number of institutions. The other aspect which is uh, one of the issues in long case examination that most many a times the examiners they start asking theoretical questions. Uh, because the, the clinical component is finished very quickly and then to fill the time, the examiners start asking theoretical questions, exploring the depth of candidates understanding, that is their knowledge and management plan, uh, which is not really part of, of a long case uh, examination and these aspects can be easily examined uh, uh, during written examination. So this aspect can be covered uh, easily by training of examination and blueprinting uh, clinical methods, interpretation of findings and avoid theoretical questions. So examiners can, in a short briefing can, can help to manage uh, this issue. The, so that is 
the ASCII and the and the long case. Now, ASCII and the short case, the issues which we see in the short case is that patients of change between candidates. So not every uh, candidate gets the same uh, kind of patients. And uh, as we see that some students get relatively easy cases, other may get relatively difficult cases. So there is no standardization of examination in the short uh, cases. The reproducibility and validity of these examination is affected by unstructured questions uh, by the examiner. So there's a lack of standardization. On the other hand, the argument is that using different patient is the realistic uh, real life situation. In real life situations, we don't get the same kind of patients with similar behavior and similar signs. So doing short case examination is really a realistic uh, uh, situation and has an uh, uh, edge on, on, on the OSCE in, in this aspect. And again, this we can use the standardized uh, marking schemes to cover the, the second part. So again, the point is that if we want to retain both the long case and short case, in my opinion, we can still retain with little bit uh, uh, improvement and little bit of, of training. And there are strong reasons to, to, to retain uh, this kind of examination, uh, which I'll, I'll talk in, in a short while. Uh, uh, in especially in developing countries. So in summary, the drawbacks of long case and short case examination, like intercase variability, the a single case does not allow the assessment of candidates' performance. Yeah, this is another another area because the num uh, to get a reliability, the number of cases needs to be increased. So just one long case may not be enough, but we have a solution to that. The content specificity of long case makes the generalization of skills assessed using this technique nearly uh, uh, impossible. So we cannot generalize uh, our conclusion from one case. But if we start counting our end of posting clinical examination as a part uh, let's say as a continuous assessment part of exit examination. So most of these uh, uh, you know, uh, points against long case or short case uh, can, be, can be covered. So for example, in our final year, uh, 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 there, there may be five or six postings, in medicine, surgery, pediatrics, ONG, psychiatry, et cetera. And we have end of posting clinical examinations. So if these clinical examination consisting of long and short cases, they can become the part of the continuous assessment. So then we would have enough number of uh, these uh, cases to make it a reliable uh, method of uh, examination. The third part, uh, why were uh, also examination? It, it is, uh, basically a recall of uh, and depth of knowledge and hypothetical problem uh, solving judgment, clinical reasoning and analytic skills. Uh, again, the question, the issue is unstructured questions uh, and the inter-rater, uh, poor inter-rater uh, reliability. Again, these aspects can be covered by using a structured viva and by, for example, by using MEQ. Now the point I'm trying to make here is that, of course, ASCII is a very useful alternative in, in these situations, but ASCII has its own limitations, uh, which we will uh, elaborate uh, uh, in a short while. So if we want to retain the long case and short case examination, we can still do that with appropriate uh, changes. Now, 
OSP or OSCE, there are a number of variants. So from OSCE, it has changed to a number of other formats like OSPI, the Objective Structured uh, Practical Examination, then Objective Structured Assessment of Technical Skills, then Objective Structured Video Examinations, then Team Objective Structured Clinical Examination, and there are many more. So this, as I said, that OSCE is actually a platform. It is not just one method, and it can be applied to number of situations. Now, here is another interesting point that the while candidates are appearing in the clinical examination under observation, their behavior may not be the real actual behavior. They, they may have a different or controlled behavior under supervision during examination, whereas the actual uh, performance or actual uh, uh, the behavior may be different. So there are methods to, to cover both aspects. So actual performance can be uh, assessed, what is called the 360 degree assessment, whereas observed performance can be covered uh, both through clinical examination, uh, long case, short case, or under OSCE. So this is another aspect where OSCE can play a major role. As I have mentioned uh, earlier, that OSCE assesses the student at the show level and not at the does level of uh, miller pirouette uh, Now, coming to some limitations of the OSCE, First, as I said, it is at show how level, it is not at does level. Whereas the clinical examination, long case or short case, would be really at the highest level of uh, Miller's pyramid. Second, it is in simulated environment. And simulated environment itself can influence uh, on the student's performance. Many of us will forget to greet, smile, or introduce ourselves to a mannequin in real life. And this is what we expect from students to do. So it is really uh, does not reflect the real life uh, situation. In real life, non-clinical skills such as team working, resource management, situation uh, uh, awareness, leadership, are uh, are tested, which is not possible in OSCE. Just imagine examination of a real infant in the ward as compared to examination of a small mannequin. So they, they are not comparable at all. Another limit of uh, OSCE is compartmentalization, where we are assessing certain skills in isolation. For example, pap smear on a model, uh, which becomes a very mechanical uh, exercise. Whereas if it's being done on a patient, then you have to take, uh, take a lot of precautions, the communication skills, the knowledge, the attitude, the ethics. So all those aspects uh, are neglected. Uh, due to this compartmentalization. So basically we are dividing the patients into small components, small parts, rather than examining the patient as a whole. OSCE should be designed to assess competencies or skills which cannot be assessed using pen and paper, but most of the time we do see that uh, maybe the first question is a skill or uh, are a procedure, but rest of the questions are based on, on the theoretical knowledge, which is not really a, a good uh, OSCE. Um, consider, for example, a station designed to assess a candidate's ability to interpret a radiograph. So we use uh, uh, this, uh, OSCE, uh, the x-rays are used in OSCE where there is no examiner and there are uh, structured questions and students have to answer those questions. 
uh, that may be easily tested in other uh, methods more reliably and more uh, cost effectively rather than in OSCE. So the big issue here is that the poorly structured uh, OSCE stations um, may lead to candidates learning skills to pass uh, the uh, examination rather than to improve their uh, clinical skills or cl clinical uh, performance. And this is mainly due to compartmentalization and assessing certain skills in isolation without proper context. So summary of limitations. It's an unrealistic simulated environment. Uh, there is a fragmentation or compartmentalization. There's a minute checklist and many a times examiners get distracted. They are more concerned to fill in the, the checklist rather than looking at the candidate. And role of the examiner needs to be defined for each station. Uh, for example, if students seems distracted or lost and so how to, to intervene. Then if we are using the uh, simulated patients, the extensive training is required and uh, the expensive high fidelity mannequins are required, uh, which may not be possible for uh, resource constra uh, constraints uh, uh, with, with institutions. <clears throat> 